And more than a year since St. Louis Mayor Tashara Jones signed a bill dedicating millions of dollars to make city streets safer. But most of that money hasn't been spent yet. Tonight, we take a closer look at where the Safer Streets plan stands now. It was signed after a Tennessee teen lost both her legs in a crash downtown and after four young people died in a separate crash. And there have been several other high profile crashes since then. Tonight, our political editor, Mark Maxwell, reports from City Hall. Mark. High profile crashes and deeply sourced data tell this troubling tale. Uh, Wallet Hub recently ranked best and worst cities to drive in America. In the safety column, St. Louis ranked last. But we see the urgency often when the flashing lights and sirens go speeding to the scene of a crash. We went to look and see if we could find evidence the city is treating this like an emergency now. In a city known for speed. This city is designed for cars to go fast. Janae Edmondson's family wonders what's taking so long to slow reckless drivers down. They saw courts reach a guilty verdict faster than the city could start breaking ground. We need to do more to hold reckless drivers accountable. That was Mayor Jones announcing her $40 million Safer Streets plan last March. It's been a year, so what are we doing? We've done nothing to stop someone else. The long-term plan takes engineers and contractors and blueprints. We are doing everything we can um, to uh, implement traffic studies that have been sitting on shelves for years. But in the short term... What has the city done since then to check all the signage? The city did switch this yield sign to a stop sign at the scene of Janae's high-profile crash. There are a lot of things they can do right now, like narrowing the street they can do right now. Have it. Zoom out and you find a city with lanes designed so dangerously they carry a grim nickname. It's called a suicide lane because you often end up head on with another vehicle. South City Alderman Shane Cohn pressed the city to install these concrete barriers after a high speed crash turned fatal. Streets like this where there's literally not even a purpose for a left hand turn, why have a left hand turn lane? It only allows for people to bypass other vehicles and speed. His idea raises a key question. Why couldn't a city that installs barriers to drive homeless people off City Hall's lawn install barriers to keep pedestrians alive? So this was something that was a relatively easy fix, and um, so far the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive aside from the aesthetics of it. People don't like the way it looks. It looks trashy. I agree with that. While the city waits for more permanent upgrades, the Edmondsons have this admonition for city leaders. You can either make excuses or you can take action. Taking swift action on transportation infrastructure is incredibly popular, too. When the city recently staged a survey asking the public how to spend that Rams settlement money, transportation infrastructure came in second, making streets safer. So any politician who finds a way to show the public they're taking tangible action now would likely benefit from a significant boost in the polls. Live downtown, Mark Maxwell, five on your side.